In this lesson, we're going to look at the interior and exterior angles in polygons. So if we start with talking about the interior angles in a polygon, remember the interior angles are the angles inside of the polygon, and the vertex of each interior angle is the same as the vertex um, of the polygon. So in this triangle, I have three interior angles. So in a triangle, those three interior angles will always equal 180. So the sum of the interior angles in a triangle is 180, and that'll always be the case. So that's just the theorem. And then if you look at some other polygons, so if we look at this quadrilateral here, a strategy that we can use to find what the sum of the interior angles are is to split this quadrilateral up into triangles um, whose angles are sharing those angles of the polygon. So what I mean by that is if I start at a vertex, so let's say I start with this vertex, and I draw a segment connecting to all of the other vertices. This first segment connecting to this vertex here wouldn't do anything. It's already drawn in. So if I connect to this opposite vertex, and then if I imagine drawing from this vertex to this point over here, again, you don't need to draw that because you already have a segment there. So the number of triangles that you create here are two. So you have two triangles um, because within these two triangles the three angles and each of these triangles completely make up the four interior angles of this quadrilateral so that means the sum of the interior angles is going to be two times 180 degrees because there's two triangles and 180 degrees in each of the triangles so you multiply that and you get 360 so that's where the sum being 360 comes from same idea for this pentagon. So again, pick a vertex to start at. So if I start here, connect to each of the other vertices. So I'm just starting at that vertex down in the bottom left and connecting to all of the other corners. I see that there's three possible triangles this time. So that means that the sum of the interior angles will be three times 180 degrees. So essentially, so that's going to give us 540. So essentially what happens here is the number of triangles times 180 will be how you're going to get the sum of the interior. Now, the number of triangles, if you've noticed here, is always two less than the number of sides. So if we have a pentagon with five sides, there's three triangles. Four sides, there's two triangles. Three sides, well, there's only one triangle. So... I'm going to just make a note of that here, that the number of triangles is always the number of sides minus 2. So that's kind of um, our rule here that we're getting. So that means the formula for the sum of the interior angles for any polygon is going to be the number of sides, which... When we're talking about polygons, we use n to represent the number of sides. So it's going to be the number of sides minus 2 times 180 degrees. So I'm going to make a note that n equals the number of sides, which is also equal to the number of angles. And then remember, this n minus 2, where that comes from, that's really the number of triangles. So there's always two less triangles. So that's where the formula comes from. But if you just remember this formula, then you'll be set. So the sum of the interior angles is always n minus 2 times 180. And then through your exploration, you saw that when you take and you draw in all the exterior angles, so if you imagine basically extending each of the sides, so if I take... Um, this triangle and I extend this side, then I extend this side, and then this one here. These three angles are the exterior angles. When you saw um, the exploration, you saw that when these come together, they form a circle. So there's 360 degrees. Same thing is going to happen here. So if I were to extend this side, this side, this one, and then this one, those four angles, when you piece them together, if you were to cut them apart and piece them together, you would see that they form 360. Same thing goes with the pentagon. So the exterior angles are all these outside angles. Basically, you extend one side in one direction, and that's how you're getting your exterior angles. So no matter what, the sum of the exterior angles will always be 360. So that one's easy to remember because it really doesn't depend on 
the number of sides the figure has, it'll always just be 360. So when you piece those exterior angles together, you'll always get 360 degrees. So let's look at, so using these formulas, how do we solve some problems with them? So let's look at that. So the first one here says the sum of the exterior angles of a pentagon. So those are my key words here. So the exterior angles of a pentagon, pentagons have five sides, but if we're talking about exterior angles, so the sum of exterior angles is always just going to be 360. So this question, 360, no calculation required for this. If you're trying to do example two where it says find one exterior angle of a regular octagon, well, now we know that all of the angles have to add up to 360. All of the exterior angles have to add up to 360. But we're trying to find one of the angles. So remember that an octagon has eight sides. The important word here is that this is regular. So what that means is all sides and all angles are equal. If it didn't say regular, you wouldn't be able to do this question because we have to know that everything's equal to be able to solve for this. So basically what I'm going to do, if I want to find one angle, so one exterior angle, I'm going to take the sum and I'm going to divide that by the number of sides or the number of angles, which is n. So essentially what this means is we're going to take the 360, which is always going to be the sum, and we're going to divide that by n. So in this particular problem, one exterior angle is going to be 360, divided by the number of sides or number of angles, same thing. So we're going to take 360, divide that by 8, and you end up with 45. So that means one exterior angle in a regular octagon will be 45 degrees. If we look at the next example, now it's saying that the measure of each exterior angle in an n-gon is 20 degrees. So this time they're giving us the angle degree, we want to know how many sides. So we're basically going to use the same formula. So we're going to use this idea that one exterior angle is equal to 360 over n, but we're going to plug in a little bit differently because this time we know that this is equal to 20 and we're going to solve this for n. So basically I have um, a 20 equals a fraction, so I can put this over 1 and cross multiply. So this is going to end up being 20 times n equals 360. So then we're going to take the 360 divided by 20, so we get n equals 18. So that means the number of sides in this polygon is 18. So it would really be called an 18 gone. So those are all using exterior angles, so you could be asked to find the sum, which will always be 360. You could be asked to find one exterior angle, or um, you could be asked to find the number of sides given an exterior angle. So those are your different types of questions, one using your sum formula, the other using this formula here. Um, so then, if we look at these next couple questions, these are involving interior angles. So for this example four, we have quadrilateral ABCD. So I'm just going to sketch a four-sided figure. It can be any quadrilateral. And I don't know if this is going to be drawn to scale at all. I'm just um, sketching a picture here to give us a visual. So we have angle A is 2X plus 20. B is, um, we have to erase this because I can't see, 3X minus 30. C is x plus 10, and D is 2x. So in a quadrilateral, these are your interior angles. We want to know what is the number of degrees in the largest angle of this quadrilateral. So the first thing you have to do is you're going to have to find x. So the sum of these interior angles here will be, so the first thing you do is you find the sum of the interior angles, and some of you probably just know for a quadrilateral, it's 360. We have it on the top of our page. But let's say this was a pentagon. How would you do it? So the sum of the interior angles is what you have to do first, in case it's one that you don't know. Um, so it would be n minus 2 times 180 is the formula from up, up above. So that means it's going to be 4 sides minus 2 times 180. So this will give us 360. 
So now when we go to solve for x, we're going to set all of these angles, um, we're going to add all of these angles up and set them equal to 360. So we're going to do 2x plus 20 plus 3x minus 30 plus x plus 10 plus 2x equals 360. And like I said, you could have just went right to this step here. You don't have to show this step one because a quadrilateral, most of you already know that all of those angles add to 360. But if this were like a pentagon or an octagon and you weren't as comfortable with knowing what the sum is, you could find that first. And then from here, we're going to combine our like terms. So I have my x's that I'm going to combine first. So I have 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2. So it's going to give me 8x. And then I have 20 minus 30 plus 10. So those are going to all cancel out, which is nice. So 8x equals 360. So I'm going to take 360, divide by 8. I get x equals 45. So there's my x value. The third part of this is to actually answer the question. So you're going to have to find the largest angle. So that means you're going to be plugging these back in. So you're going to find angle A by plugging in. So I'm not going to show the substitution just because of the space here. So I'm doing 2 times 45 plus 20. So I get 110. Angle B, I'm doing... So for angle B, I'm doing 3 times 45 minus 30, so 105. Angle C, 45 plus 10, so 55. And then angle D is 45 times 2, or 2 times 45, so you get 90. So that means the largest angle is angle A. So then the next one here, find the nearest hundredth, the measure of an interior angle in a regular 23 gon. So you're trying to find the measure of one interior angle. So the first thing you want to do is if you know that the sum is um, n minus 2 times 180, well, if you want to find one of them, well, there's 23 angles. So to find one interior angle... It's going to be the sum divided by the number of sides or number of angles. And in this case, the sum is n minus 2 times 180 over n. So this is your formula for this that we're going to use. We're going to take the sum. It's very similar to the one exterior angle. The difference is the sum isn't just 360. So when I plug in one interior angle, the sum is going to be n minus 2, so 23 minus 2 times 180. And then I'm going to divide that by 23 because there's 23 angles. And again, it has to tell us that this is regular so that we know all 23 angles are the same. So I'm going to do 23 minus 2 first times that by 180. So that's going to give me 3,780 over 23. So divide that by 23. And we end up with the decimal. So to the nearest hundredth, I'm getting 164.35, if I round two decimal places, degrees, because this is an angle measure. And then the last one is kind of the reverse of this. So now they're saying that the sum is the 2520. Um, so the sum of the measures of the interior angles is 2520. How many sides does the polygon have? So this means we want to find n. So it's kind of like that reverse that we did um, with the exterior angles. The difference is they're giving us the sum, though. They're not telling us what one interior angle equals. So we're going to still use our sum formula, so n minus 2 times 180. So we have 2520 equals n minus 2 times 180. So we want to solve this for n. So up to you how you want to do it. You could distribute this 180 through um, and then combine like terms, get n on one side, numbers on the other. You could also take and divide by this 180 right now because since this is multiplication, you could just divide that. It really doesn't make a difference, your preference. So you either distribute 
and then you'll bring it over or you divide it. By dividing, I get 14 equals n minus 2. Solve for n means add 2 to both sides, so we get 16 equals n. So how many sides does it have? It has 16 sides. So it would be, it would be called a 16 gon. So lots to remember here in the key ideas. You have really four different formulas that I was working with. So just um, I would get those four formulas down. So we have two right here. We had the one interior or one exterior angle is 360 over N. And then we have the one interior angle is the N minus 2 times 180 over N. So basically if you have those four formulas for your key ideas, after that you're just really plugging in and solving depending on what the question's asking. So get your formulas as key ideas, um, get any other ideas that you want to remember, and then from there do your check your understanding problems.